radio transmission station. If those direct signals need to be turned, it's important that the swap is open and shown by hills, otherwise the signal will be too strong. On the 25th of February 1935, Arnold Wilkinson, the driver of the Morris commercial van, housed housing the equipment arrived at the site. They set up two dipole aerials that will pick up any echoes received from aircraft, but were, but were arranged to reduce still further the direct signal from going through. Does that make sense? He's fed into a sensitive receiver housed in the back of the van, and the output was connected to a cathode ray oscillator. Oscilloscope. Oscilloscope, sorry, yeah. Alignment took longer than expected. It was dark and the lights of the van did not work. The final adjustments were carried out by match light and were only just completed when the BBC station finished. Success. Watson, Roy and Rowe were so pleased with the result they rushed off to London leaving Pat behind returning for him later. That's nice. I didn't say that word. The phlegmatic Wilkinson tyre packed up the equipment and followed later. Radio direction finding, RDF, as it was known, had arrived. It's classified as top secret and a series of theatre experiments carried out at Orford Ness on the east coast. Five people arrived at the site on the morning of the 25th of Feb. Arnold Wilkins and Dyer, the driver, came from their hotel at Whedon. A.P. Road, the secretary to the Tissard Committee, accompanied Robert Watson Watt from London, together with Watt's nephew, Pat. He was left sitting at the roadside outside the gate. Because Dyer did not have security clearance either, he was sent to a distant corner of the field. Also. Yeah. Yeah. You got, uh, yeah, so the FA... Okay, the RAF provided a handlay page Hayford bomber, which is a bi wing thing, piloted by the Flight Lieutenant R.S. Bluke to act as the target they were hoping to track. It flew over the site and along the direction of the strongest signals from Daventry. On the first run, the aircraft was slightly off course and the variation in the signal was seen on the cathode ray screen. On the second run, it Success was achieved as the Hayford flew over the line on screen, fluctuating longer and shorter, indicating that radio energy was being reflected from the aircraft above. The variation continued while the aircraft travelled for about eight miles. Which is that? Establishing that Balsy Man and his Felix Stone. 1942, he was knighted for his efforts and added to added the hyphen to his name at the same time Arnold Wilkins was awarded an OBE. At Ballsy, Wilkins skipped a team of physicists and engineers who developed the system and installed a chain of 20 stations along the east and south coast of England in time for the outbreak of war in 1939. From 1943, as radar as it got, as it Came known, became a vital part of air and sea transport. That the success first gained at this site, the outcome of the Battle of Britain could have been very different, and many more lives would have been lost due to bombing. Yeah.